But I want to start off the show today by ranking all 32 starting quarterbacks heading into the 2022-2023 season. Now, here's one disclaimer right here. I did not rank Trey Lance as far as these quarterbacks go just because we really haven't seen a whole lot of Trey Lance. Like, for example, Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, you know, Davis Mills, Trevor Lawrence, all notable quarterbacks that got drafted last year, played significant snaps and played a lot of games for rookies. Trey Lance was not asked to play a lot for the 49ers, so I decided to rank Jimmy Garoppolo instead of Trey Lance. That's the only disclaimer right here. Now, what I did, I rated these quarterbacks 1 through 32, but really, in totality, we're arguing about a, a spot or two here or there. So I really want you guys to pay attention to where I have these guys ranked in tiers. Because I rank quarterbacks based on five tiers. The elite tier, the borderline elite tier, the above average tier, the average tier, and the below average tier. I will explain how all this goes as I continue to talk about these things during this segment. But we're going to kick things off by talking about the Tier 1 quarterbacks heading into this season. And Tier 1 is the elite category, the best of the best. Quarterbacks that truly elevate the players around them, as well as the coaching staff, and quarterbacks that are consistently great, meaning they don't have very many bad Sundays. And their definition of a bad game or a bad season is pretty passable for most of the other quarterbacks in the NFL. So... One through seven, I have seven quarterbacks. Yes, I have seven quarterbacks in my elite category. I believe quarterbacks are better than ever, people. And I'll give you an example. I think Ben Roethlisberger is arguably not a top five quarterback of his era. And that guy won two Super Bowls, has broken all kinds of records. But I just don't think that he's better than Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, or Patrick Mahomes. And I think I think Russell Wilson has an argument over Ben Roethlisberger. So that just tells you of recent, the last 10 to 15 years, how good quarterbacks are. There are seven quarterbacks in my elite tier. Now, let me just say this. Number one, I have Patrick Mahomes. Number two, I have Aaron Rodgers. Number three, I have Tom Brady. Number four, I have Josh Allen. Number five, I have Joe Burrow. Number six, I have Russell Wilson. Number seven, I have Deshaun Watson. Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, and Tom Brady, they are interchangeable, meaning you can argue for whoever you want as the best quarterback in the NFL. The bottom line is those are the top three guys. They're three of the five only active Super Bowl winners at the quarterback position in the NFL that are starting quarterbacks. Patrick Mahomes right now, heading into 2022, he's the best starting quarterback in the NFL. His ability to make plays off schedule, to elevate the players around him. The arm talent is unbelievable. Patrick Mahomes checks off pretty much every box you want to check as a starting quarterback. The talent, the leadership qualities. I think that his leadership is probably his most underrated trait. The way he galvanizes the troops around him and his ability to come from behind and win games, that's a rare quality to have. I think Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback going. Right behind him are Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. I have Aaron Rodgers number two, Tom Brady number three. Those guys are just a little bit more scheme dependent than a guy like Patrick Mahomes who's still in the physical peak of his prime. But Rodgers and Brady are still unbelievable and playing at a very high MVP level still to this day. Now, Josh Allen is unbelievable. I believe he has the strongest arm in the NFL. And last year, he was unbelievable in the playoffs. He's able to run the football at an elite level. But Josh Allen has not accomplished as much as Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, and Patrick Mahomes. And I believe those three guys are just better at playing the position. And you look at Joe Burrow, some people may think, why is Joe Burrow in the elite category? Um, Folks, I think what a lot of people forget is that, at least based on my opinion, Joe Burrow was playing close to a top 10 quarterback his rookie season. He was a borderline top 10 quarterback his rookie season, I believed, before getting injured. So it's not like Joe Burrow just automatically goes to the Super Bowl, comes out of nowhere, and you're like, oh, you're just ranking this guy out of nowhere. No, I think his rookie season, he established himself as being a very good quarterback. And in his first full season, with arguably the worst offensive line in the entire NFL, and with a head coach by the name of Zach Taylor, who I think is good, who has some promise, but we're not putting Zach Taylor in the elite coaching conversation. We're not doing that, people. Joe Burrow is the real deal. He took a Cincinnati Bengals team to the Super Bowl that a lot of people did not expect to get there. I think Joe Burrow is arguably the most accurate quarterback in the NFL from a throwing perspective outside of maybe Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. He has to be in the elite category for me. Now, Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson get the last two spots. 
Russell Wilson, to me, has not fallen off a cliff, people. Last year was his first ever losing season from a win-loss record perspective as a starting quarterback. But the previous nine seasons, Russell Wilson had a winning record. And Russell Wilson has proven he can win you a Super Bowl. Okay, I think he's going to do wonders for the Denver Broncos. I will not be shocked at all if he wins them a Super Bowl eventually. I think Russell Wilson is one of the best deep ball throwers in the entire NFL. I don't think Russell has fallen off a cliff, so I, I have him in the elite category. And last but not least, Deshaun Watson. I think Deshaun Watson is a special quarterback. Say what you want about the off-the-field issues, the lawsuits, and things like that. Deshaun Watson had an all-time great rookie season. He's shown the ability to win a playoff game. And in Houston, when we saw him, the last time we saw him, this was a guy that was consistently putting up elite production and carrying the Houston Texans to victories despite having one of the worst offensive lines in the entire NFL, an average head coach at best, that's being pretty nice, in Bill O'Brien, not much of a run game. And people can say, oh, we had DeAndre Hopkins to throw to. Deshaun Watson had his best statistical season as a quarterback without DeAndre Hopkins. I think Deshaun Watson is a special talent. And you notice all seven of these guys in this elite category have proven they can win a playoff game. So all you people saying, oh, what about Justin Herbert? Justin Herbert has not even proven he can get to the playoffs yet. I believe he's going to do it eventually. But until he does it, I can't put him above these seven guys. I just can't. I think you are disqualified from being a top five quarterback in the NFL if you have not won a playoff game and if you have not led a team to the playoffs. I'm sorry. That's my criteria. I believe it's a fair one. Let's go to tier number two. Now, tier number two, there are four quarterbacks. Matthew Stafford, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, and Kyler Murray. That's eight through 11 on my list right there. The tier two quarterbacks are quarterbacks that are borderline elite. I believe there are four guys in this tier right now. And all four of these guys that you see on your screen, if you're watching on YouTube, from a talent perspective, you can make the argument they should be in tier number one. However, it's just that guys above them have proven more or just a little bit better. The four guys I'm mentioning right here, I do not consider them to be as consistent as the seven guys I have above them. For example, Matthew Stafford, unbelievable arm talent, but there are some Sundays where that guy is not very good, okay? He just led the NFL in interceptions last season. He was tied with Trevor Lawrence, people, and Stafford has won a Super Bowl. I will give him that. However, let's not forget, the Los Angeles Rams got to a Super Bowl with Jared Goff as their quarterback, and I think that Matthew Stafford, well, I don't even think, it's not even up for debate, Matthew Stafford also is benefiting from having an elite head coach in Sean McVay and unbelievable weapons to throw to. Matthew Stafford was a piece to the puzzle in winning the Super Bowl this past season. Now, again, he was probably the ultimate piece because the Rams have been good for the past couple of years and they finally got over the hump. But let's pump the brakes here. I think Matthew Stafford, I think that him being the top quarterback in Tier 2 is more than fair. Lamar Jackson, unbelievable quarterback in the regular season. He's won a league MVP. He has an argument for being a top five quarterback. I do firmly believe you can make that argument. However, Lamar Jackson's a different quarterback in the playoffs. He's a horrible playoff quarterback up to this point. I believe you can win a Super Bowl with Lamar Jackson, but up to this point in his playoff career, he has been a below average performer. That's the bottom line. That is where I have to knock him. Justin Herbert, again, from a talent perspective, he has to be somewhere in my top 10, but he just hasn't proven what other guys are proving yet. That's my only criticism of Herbert. And Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray has a lot of ebbs and flows, meaning one Sunday, Kyler Murray looks like, man, he's a top five quarterback. Then there are some Sundays where, man, Kyler Murray's got some limitations, man. I think Kyler Murray is still growing as a passer of the football. He has yet to throw for 4,000 yards in a season. But I do think the talent is unbelievable. He's a borderline top 10 quarterback, has an argument for maybe over Lamar, Herbert, guys like that. If he can put together an MVP-type season this year. Kyler was in the MVP conversation last year until he got hurt. Then he tailed off at the end of the year. I just need to see a little bit more from Kyler before I say you're an elite quarterback. But he's in tier number two for me. Now, the tier three guys, the above average guys, these are guys that I'm not breaking the bank for. I'm not making a big-time trade for these guys. I don't believe these quarterbacks are quarterbacks that you could automatically plug into a team and say, yep, that's an instant Super Bowl contender because of that quarterback. I'm sorry, Dak Prescott, not on that level. I'm sorry. 
Derek Carr, not on that level. At least they have not proven to be on that level quite yet. However, these are well above average guys that you can win a lot of games with. And ideally, if you put them in the right position to succeed and you put a lot of talent around them, they can certainly lead you to a Super Bowl. And maybe if things break their way, they might win a Super Bowl. Dak Prescott at 12, Derek Carr at 13, Baker Mayfield at 14, Jalen Hurts at 15, Mac Jones at 16, Matt Ryan at 17, and Jared Goff at 18. I snuck Jared Goff into the Tier 3 category just because he's proven that he can get to a Super Bowl if you put the right pieces around him. And you can say, oh, well, Jimmy Garoppolo's gotten to a Super Bowl, Jamon. What about him? Well, along the, along the ride to the Super Bowl, Jared Goff contributed to winning better than a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo. Like, for example, I think Jared Goff, if you were to put him into a category, he's kind of a game manager that can make big-time plays when you need him to. And Jared Goff that year, at one point, he was in the MVP conversation. So I think Jared Goff, if you put a little bit more on his plate, he can deliver for you better than a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo and guys like that, maybe Kirk Cousins, you know. That's why I have him in my tier number three uh, category right here. I think that he is just above average. Not much more than that. Let's go Let's go at the top, though. Dak Prescott. I think Dak Prescott is very close to being a, two, a Tier 2 quarterback. I just think the 11 guys that I have ranked above Dak Prescott are far more talented. And in the playoffs, the past five years, we're entering year number six for Dak Prescott, I believe. He has not been great. He only has one playoff victory. Um, I think that Dak Prescott has a chance to get up higher on this list. But for now... I just can't put him any higher than these other guys because I think the other guys are better than him from a talent perspective, and he hasn't proven much in the playoffs. Derek Carr, for me, is coming off arguably a career year. I think the year where he was in the MVP conversation in 2016, he was better. But he had a, a great year this past year. I want to see him build off of that. I want to see if he can win a playoff game this season. The Raiders are a very talented team. We'll see what they do. Some of you may be looking at me crazy for having Baker Mayfield in the Tier 3 category. Let me just say, last year, Baker was awful. I get that. But a big reason why I believe Baker was awful was because he was injured. Okay, Baker Mayfield should not have been playing all last year. I think from a talent perspective, Baker Mayfield is super-duper slept on. This is a guy that had an awesome rookie year for the Cleveland Browns. A year ago, he led them to their first-ever playoff victory in forever, people. And he was a big reason why they won that playoff game because he played very well in that playoff game. They almost beat the Kansas City Chiefs on the road being led by Baker Mayfield. If they would have won that game, they would have gotten all the way to the AFC Championship game. Baker Mayfield is a big reason why the Browns, once again, have been relevant the past couple of years. His arm strength is for real. Like, he doesn't have an elite arm from an arm strength perspective, but it's definitely above average. Just because Baker is barely six foot one inches tall, that doesn't mean that he has a noodle for an arm. Baker has real arm strength. He can fit the ball into tight windows. Baker is not afraid to push the ball down the field. And when Baker is healthy and right and motivated and has a good offensive line supporting him, along with a good coaching staff, Baker Mayfield is a starting caliber quarterback, people. You know, he is a little bit mistake prone. He will make some mistakes. He will take some unnecessary chances. He's going to hit some home runs and he's going to make some mistakes. But I'm okay with that. All I'm saying is let's just not look at the statistics and come to the conclusion that Baker Mayfield's an awful quarterback. That's not the case. I think Baker is underrated and he's an above average starting quarterback. Jalen Hurts might surprise you people, okay? Let me just say this. The Eagles last year in 2021 were not supposed to make the playoffs, okay? Now, Jalen Hurts, from a talent perspective, there are some things that he lacks. However, he makes up for it with great leadership qualities. And I think that he's a better talent than people give him credit for. I think that, honestly, as a thrower of the football, he's pretty accurate. I think that he has good enough arm strength to be a franchise quarterback. I think Jalen Hurts, and by the way, we don't even talk about his ability to run the football. Last year, Jalen Hurts had 10 rushing touchdowns, people. I think Jalen Hurts fits today's NFL. His intangibles are off the charts, in my opinion. Maybe not off the charts. I think I went a little bit too far right there. But they're better than guys like Kirk Cousins. They're better than guys like Carson Wentz. I think that I'm not too crazy for putting Jalen Hurts in the tier three above average category. I haven't rated as the 16th, as the 15th best quarterback. I think that's pretty fair based on what he's proven up to this point. The one problem with Jalen Hurts is he needs to improve as an anticipatory thrower, meaning he's a guy that needs to really see you open before you, before he throws the ball. No, in the NFL, 
you need to be able to anticipate better. So if Jalen Hurts can improve upon that aspect of his game, I think that he can move up this list. Mac Jones, accurate passer, good decision maker, held his own as a rookie quarterback last year, was able to help lead the Patriots to the playoffs. I just don't think that there's really any great elite special traits about Mac Jones, but if you put enough talent around Mac Jones, he can succeed. Matt Ryan, I've always been lower on Matt Ryan than most people. Years ago, he was a top 10 guy, but he has declined physically over the past couple of years. And I just never thought that Matt Ryan was a super high end talent at the quarterback position, meaning the arm strength isn't unbelievable. You know, the mobility isn't unbelievable. The size is good, but not great. The accuracy is very, very good, but not quite elite. And over the past couple of years, Matt Ryan has not won a whole lot of games. So I think that having Matt Ryan ranked as the 17th best quarterback and near the bottom of my tier three of quarterback rankings, I think that's very, very fair. Okay, so we're moving on to tier number four. Tier number four are guys, in my opinion, that are starting caliber quarterbacks, but these quarterbacks fall into a category that they are only as good as the players and the head coach surrounding them. Some of these guys are very, very talented. For example, I think Justin Fields, unbelievably talented. Trevor Lawrence, unbelievably talented. However, there is some wildly inconsistent things to some of these guys' games. There's some glaring weaknesses. Like, for example, Kirk Cousins and Jimmy Garoppolo, they really struggle when the blitz comes their way. Like, they cannot make offense for themselves. There are statues in the pocket in a way. You know, Jameis Winston, he consistently has a turnover issue. He kind of somewhat fixed that last year, but it was in a very small sample size. So we'll see if he can continue to improve upon that. But the Guys that I have in the Tier 4 category, meaning at this point, they're pretty average starters. Number 19, I have Kirk Cousins. Number 20, I have Jimmy Garoppolo. Number 21, I have Jameis Winston. Number 22, I have Trevor Lawrence. Number 23, I have Kirk Cousins. I'm sorry, Carson Wentz at number 23. Carson Wentz at 23. Ryan Tannehill at number 24. Davis Mills at number 25. And Justin Fields barely sneaks into this in this tier at number 26. Now, I will say, Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence can easily climb up this list. I believed both of them were generational talents coming out of college. I believe in both of them. I'm just simply ranking them based on what they have proven at the NFL level so far up to this point. Kirk Cousins, a lot of people are going to argue he should be higher. Folks, I, I'm sorry. We've seen 10 years of what Kirk Cousins provides to NFL team as a starting quarterback. He's a 500 quarterback. He's a statue in the pocket. He's only as good as the players around him. And people can say, oh, Jamon, what about the statistics? Anyone throwing to Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, and Stephon Diggs is going to have very good numbers. Kirk Cousins is naturally a very safe quarterback, so he's going to take the easy completions. But he doesn't throw the ball enough down the field for me. He's a very conservative guy. I think Kirk Cousins is the best game-managing quarterback out there. But, yeah, I don't think Kirk Cousins provides much intangibly from a leadership perspective. I think that he's an average leader. He doesn't really galvanize the troops around him. That's why I have guys like Jalen Hurts ahead of him. You know, um, Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, he got the 49ers to a Super Bowl, but he was along for the ride. He was not the driving force of that team. I think Jimmy's good. If you put a good team around him, he can win a lot of games, but that's about it. That's all I really have on him. Jameis Winston. I think Jameis Winston is way too inconsistent um, to be considered an above-average quarterback. I think he's average right now. He's proven some things. He's proven he can win you some games. But, yeah, I, I don't really see it with Jameis right now. You know, we saw Tom Brady take over that Tampa Bay Buccaneers team, really, that had a lot of the same pieces that Jameis Winston struggled to win with. And Tom Brady won a Super Bowl. I get it's Tom Brady, but I easily could have seen another quarterback doing that. Jameis makes way too many mistakes. He's way too inconsistent. But I do think if Jameis puts together a very good season, he could move up. Trevor Lawrence. He's better than, than the statistics suggest. He was in a very bad situation last year. I will say he does need to work on some accuracy, on some of the accuracy issues that he had last year. There was some poor decisions that he made with the football, but he significantly got better as the season went on. I'm excited to see what Trevor Lawrence does in a sophomore season. I believe he has unbelievable upside. Carson Wentz. Kind of a one-year wonder. Everyone talks about how he had an MVP-like season in 2017. But keep in mind, people, Nick Foles 
was able to win the Eagles that Super Bowl. That just tells you how talented the Philadelphia Eagles roster was. That Nick Foles, of all quarterbacks, won the Super Bowl that season. So was Carson Wentz really that great? Or was really that Eagles team that he had just so great that it did not matter what quarterback was on that team, that roster was going to win a ton of games and probably a Super Bowl. From a durability standpoint, Carson Wentz doesn't check the box. From a leadership standpoint, Carson Wentz really doesn't check the box. You know, he's, he tends to melt down in some games. There's just way too many inconsistencies. He's kind of like Jameis Winston, although I will say Jameis is a better leader and has better intangibles and galvanizes people better than a guy like Carson. So I have Jameis over Carson. But, yeah, I'm not that big on Carson Wentz. Ryan Tannehill is the definition of average people. I'll give Ryan Tannehill credit from the standpoint that he played great two seasons ago. But to me, him playing great was a reflection of just how talented the Tennessee Titans were. Like, for example, the Titans the last four years are one of only four teams to make the playoffs four straight years. And that's not mainly because Ryan Tannehill is a great quarterback. It's, it's because the Titans have a great coaching staff, great weapons. I think Tannehill is really just along for the ride. He is the definition of average, in my opinion. Davis Mills, he showed me a lot last year. I think he could get, I think he could really continue to move up this list. He's not being put in the best situation to succeed, but he's a very accurate passer of the football. At least he was last year by rookie standards. The Texans definitely might have something there. Justin Fields, he flashed a ton last year, meaning you saw some throws where you're like, man, this guy can legitimately be a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. But there was way too much inconsistency to his game. Justin Fields needs to be put in a better situation to succeed. However, I don't think he's going to make it if the Bears don't put better players around him. And I will say a reason why I have Trevor rated ahead of Justin Fields or a guy like Davis Mills ahead of Justin Fields is because while Justin Fields showed flashes last year, we didn't necessarily see him put together the full package from a game-to-game basis, the way Davis Mills at times did and the way Trevor Lawrence did at the end of the year last year. That's why I have Justin Fields in the bottom, of at the bottom, I should say, of my Tier 4 rankings. Now, Tier 5, last but not least, the below-average guys by NFL starting quarterback standards. These guys are guys I do not want to have as my starting quarterback in the NFL. Now, Zach Wilson is at the top of this, this category just because – He's more talented than all these guys that I have in this tier. But I was not a huge fan of Zach Wilson coming out of BYU. I did not think he was worthy of the second overall pick. He was all over the place as a rookie. He has a lot of things that he needs to fix. He's already been injured. There are some injury concerns. I'm not too confident in Zach Wilson. But I will say, from a talent perspective, he does have a natural ability to throw the football. He just needs to find a way to put it all together, you know. And I don't know if he'll ever do it, but... Yeah, that's how I feel about Zach Wilson. Mr. Trubisky, he's shown that he can get a team to the playoffs, but those Bears teams that he led to the playoffs were pretty talented on paper. I don't think Trubisky provides you much in terms of being a starting quarterback. Like, the accuracy is hit and miss. The reading of defenses is hit and miss. Like, I don't think Trubisky – he only had one year of starting in North Carolina. I don't think Trubisky ever was ready to be an NFL starting quarterback once he entered the NFL. I don't think that he had, he was properly developed in Chicago. He's behind the eight ball. He does not, from a talent perspective, rate very high. So, yeah, that's where Trubisky is. To a tongue of Iloa, he just doesn't have the upside to me to be a high-end NFL starting quarterback. And we see Tua tongue of Iloa struggle with a lot of basic things. So, Look, I felt Tua was very overrated coming out of Alabama. I felt there was some definite concerns about his overall game. I just don't think that he's much better than a lot of these guys. I think that he's a bottom-tier starting quarterback. There is a chance for him to move up this list, however. But right now, Tua, to me, I just don't see the upside. I think that he has one of the worst arms in the NFL from an arm strength perspective among starting quarterbacks. People say that he's an accurate passer because of his completion percentage. However... When I turn on the tape, 
I don't see a pinpoint accurate thrower of the football. I could name a lot of quarterbacks that I believe are more accurate throwers of the football than what Tua Tagovailoa is. So that's where I'm at with Tua. Daniel Jones, Geno Smith, and Marcus Mariota round out this list. I don't think Daniel Jones has a ton of upside. There's been a lot of inconsistencies to his game over the past couple of years. I did not think he was worth the sixth overall pick. He has not proven very much. The upside to me is not really there. The pocket presence is horrible. I just don't really have much hope for Daniel Jones. Geno Smith, you know, I will say he's gotten better, but I don't think any team wants Geno Smith being their starting quarterback if they want to be taken serious. Seattle's just in a situation where he's their best guy, and Marcus Mariota, he's the worst starting quarterback in the entire NFL. I'm sorry, I didn't see the upside in Tennessee. I did not see the upside as a second overall pick when he was coming out of Oregon. The arm strength is not there as a starting quarterback. The accuracy is not there. He does have some decent mobility, but he's not a crazy great athlete like a Lamar, you know, like a Josh Allen. You know, I just don't see... What other people see in Mariota, I think that he is he's not very good. He has won a playoff game, but I think that that was a product, once again, of how talented the Titans were as a team, not Marcus Mariota being super talented as a quarterback. So, yeah, there you have it.